Hello everyone. Uh, let's see a differential amplifier today. Uh, not the regular amplifier. Uh, you know the five pack or the calf code amplifier. Uh, it's a kind of different. Uh, that's why we are here to talk about it today. Uh, it's uh, the amplifier that you see on your screen. Uh, it's a differential pair of course, but uh, it uses a positive feedback to achieve high gain. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, gain is GM1 by GM3 minus GM2. GM3 and GM2 can be very close to each other. That means uh, GM1 divided by GM3 minus GM2 can be very very high. So uh, that's what is good about this circuit. It achieves high gain, but there are some more features which are good about this circuit, which we will discuss uh, in this uh, video today. So to begin with, uh, we need to analyze this part of the circuit because that's what is different from the other differential amplifiers that you see. So let's see what's the differential and common mode uh, impedance of this part of the circuit. To do that, let's just take it separately like this and let's analyze it. Of course, we want to see this, but uh, let's begin with a simple diode connected differential load instead of the full fledged circuit that you saw earlier. So in case you know, you can skip this part of the video and directly go to the part where I discuss this. But uh, in case you don't know, let's just analyze this first. Uh, it's simple. You just need to connect a differential voltage and find out the differential current to find the differential resistance of this uh, circuit. Uh, that can be done like this. Or you may want to do slightly differently, which is like this. That is connect a V test by 2 over here and a minus V test by 2 over here and uh, find out the current in this direction. This is your I and uh, this is V test by 2. Okay. Uh, remember this is a circular current. It flows first like this and then it comes out of this and goes into this. It's a loop kind of current. It's not a DC current that flows from supply to ground. Uh, it's a AC current or the right word would be a differential current. It's not AC per se. So it's a differential current. It's going to flow in a loop. Uh, it's not going to just end up in this uh, voltage source itself. It's going to come out of this voltage source and go into this device. Uh, because remember, it's the same voltage source which uh, we had connected earlier over here that we split into V test by 2 and minus V test by 2 for ease of understanding and simplicity of uh, analysis. So, uh, the current which you would have seen, okay, let me draw it for some time. Okay, if it is like this, you can see it's very simply current will go like this and come out like this. So it's this current. Now it's the same voltage source which we have put on two ends and hence current is going to go like this and come out like this and go into this. Okay. What is uh, this I? I is very simple. That's equal to GM times V test by 2. So if you just do I by V, it is GM by 2 or in terms of resistance, it is 2 over GM. So that's the differential uh, resistance that you see in this circuit. Of course, this is very, very small number uh, in terms of resistance and hence the gain that you get will be very low if you just connect this differential load to your uh, differential amplifier. Now let's uh, take a look at this circuit, which modifies this circuit, but uh, it's still kind of similar. Uh, of course, this will have a negative resistance. That means uh, if you just directly connect it in your uh, differential amplifier, you will see oscillations. It will be unstable. So you cannot use it, but we'll still analyze it because uh, uh, you can see this circuit is nothing but just parallel combination of these two. And hence, uh, we'll analyze it and then see what its impact over here. So to do that, you need to just do the same thing over and over again. That means you just need to connect your uh, V test by 2 over here and minus V test by 2 over here and find out what is 
current in this direction remember the direction so if you increase this voltage source by v test by 2 you have to increase this as well i have written it in negative polarity so that means this will go down this will go down by v test by 2 if this voltage goes up you know that current is going to flow in this direction but now this flow current is going to flow in this direction because this node is going down understood right because see if this node is going up then current will flow like this but now the current is going to flow in this direction because this node is going down see g goes down vgs goes down and hence current will go like this and same over here so but we just need to see here to find out what's the impedance it is same gm into v over 2 but since the directions are negative see here it was current was going down like this this node was going up and current was going down and hence the current was positive but here current is negative because this node is going up and current is going to go into the voltage source so that's why you see minus 2 over gm over here now as this circuit which is the one which we used it is nothing but just parallel combination of these two and hence if you do the same exercise here that is you connect differentially to ground v test over 2 and this node minus v test over 2 you are going to see the combined effect of these two oh where's the cursor okay combined effect of these two so that means uh, uh, in terms of conductances it will be very easy because if it is conductance then you when you put two circuits in parallel their conductance just gets added up so conductance of this and this will get added up that is gm over 2 minus gm over 2 will get added up with uh, gm over 2 that is nothing but gm over 2 minus gm over 2 of course it will become zero if uh, these two devices are exactly identical we don't want that so we'll have different gms intentionally so it's going to be gm1 minus gm2 over 2 or in terms of resistance you just take one one over of net so now there you have it it's uh, differentially the uh, resistance is 2 divided by gm1 minus gm2 so if gm1 and gm2 are very close to each other then you can have very high value of zn okay now this was all differential now how does it behave for common mode okay to see common mode it's uh, now let's look at uh, the common mode behavior of the same circuit uh, to analyze the common mode impedance we have to apply a common mode voltage if you have to apply a common mode, mode voltage that means we need to apply the same voltage over here and here that's nothing but shorting these two and then applying a voltage say i apply a voltage v then the current i that i am going to get is nothing but uh, this current plus this current of course these two are identical and hence these two currents will be equal that means it's twice the current that's going to flow like this so the amount of current that is going to flow like this is nothing but gm times v and twice of that number is 2 times gm times v so v by i is simply 1 over 2 gm okay so this is the common mode impedance and uh, what is the common mode impedance of this well it's exactly same as this why uh, why because uh, once you connect these two terminals together these two are exactly same you can see both drains and gates are all connected to the same node both the drains and gates are all connected to the same node and hence these two are exactly identical and hence the resistance will be 1 over 2 gm now what's the common mode impedance of this we will do the same thing again just connect these two together and apply a volt test voltage v and find out this current i 
uh, that can be simply uh, I mean simplified in the sense you can analyze it much simpler because you can see this this is nothing but parallel combination of this with this right so the total impedance has to be parallel combination of this and this that's what we have done here 1 over 2 gm plus 1 over 2 gm I mean parallel 1 over 2 gm uh, of course uh, we intentionally kept these two gms different and hence gm1 and gm2 okay uh, but one thing that we need to notice over here is that this zn is very very small you know gm is uh, a large number uh, 1 over gm is a small number that's why the looking impedance 1 over gm we say is uh, very small uh, the resistance is very small and what is that we have got here it is 1 over 4 gm so it is even smaller so this will have very very less uh, impedance for common mode signals it's 1 over 4 gm i mean assuming gm1 and gm2 are equal for simplicity of analysis uh, of course they are not equal uh, so 1 over 4 gm is going to be a very small number that means your common mode gain will be very very small because the common mode impedance offered by this circuit is very very small uh, but if you see the differential uh, uh, impedance that this circuit offers it's very large it is uh, 2 over gm1 minus gm2 remember uh, gm1 minus gm2 we intentionally made it very close to each other to get very high gain uh, but over here you can see for common mode it will have very small impedance that's what we want uh, that's what is good about the circuit as well now you connect the network over here you get your differential amplifier so now what are good things about this amplifier uh, one of course it has very large uh, uh, gain uh, that's what we want for differential signals and we have got that two it has very less common mode gain again we want that and we have got that and another uh, beauty of this circuit if you see it is it's actually making use of positive feedback to achieve high gain uh, we all know that uh, loop gain is uh, a beta and uh, the gain becomes 1 over 1 plus a beta times the open loop gain for negative feedback and uh, for positive feedback it becomes 1 minus a beta we know that uh, it becomes this and if you see oscillations will occur only when a beta is equal to 1 or uh, A beta has total phase of A, uh, 1 minus A beta this entire thing uh, needs to become negative uh, but you can always put A beta such that it is in between 0 and 1 and uh, if it is in between 0 and 1 uh, you see 1 minus a beta will be smaller than 1 but not negative yet uh, and hence the gain will go up that's what we are doing over here uh, it is using positive feedback but we are cleverly adjusting gm3 and gm2 such that we will not let it oscillate uh, but we will only make use of the high gain that it offers uh, due to positive feedback uh, that's kind of cool you know so okay so, apart from uh, uh, the gain what else is good about this so if you see this circuit we are using uh, one current source which you can implement with one transistor and uh, another transistor here and third transistor here so you only have stacked up three transistors on top of each other that means for low VDD low supply designs uh, you can make use of this to achieve high gain if you make cascodes then you have to cascode it here and you have to cascode it here you know um, it's uh, <laughs> cast coding is kind of uh, kills your uh, supply swing so I mean the output swing due to limited supply uh, but this you can have large sub, uh, swings of uh, output uh, because it has stacked up only three transistors on top of each other so <laughs> this is a pretty good circuit uh, hope you liked it and uh, hope you will use it in your designs as well